On February the 8th, 2008, a US Air Force plane crashed a few moments after takeoff from a base in the Pacific Island Territory of Guam. Both pilots successfully ejected, no harm was caused to either bystanders or local infrastructure. The two pilots suffered relatively minor injuries and were both quickly released from hospital shortly thereafter. With no cost to human life, and with the crash having occurred in poor weather conditions far away from any built-up urban areas, the incident might generally be considered rather unremarkable. No foul play was suspected, and beside the cost of the hardware, generally there was no no harm done. Now, at first glance, perhaps so, but on second glance, not at all, because this relatively nondescript event happened to be the most expensive plane crash in history, owing entirely to the unique type of aircraft involved. The down plane was called the Spirit of Kansas, and it was a B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, one of less than two dozen produced in history, and coming in at a basic starting cost of 1.2 billion US dollars at the time of its introduction. In essence, that single plane crash destroyed a plane whose whose singular price was more than the entire GDP of the Pacific Island nation of Samoa. Unsurprisingly, therefore, the crash has lived in infamy and went down as one of the most economically costly accidents featuring military equipment anywhere outside of wartime. Just before we continue with today's video, let's talk about protecting yourself online. You ever stop to think about all that data that's out there about you? Every time you connect to public Wi-Fi or browse websites, someone out there could be watching. And, well, that's not perfect, is it? Well, that's where Surfshark enters the pictures. It's like putting a lock on all of your online activities. Imagine it as a sort of digital cloak. It hides your personal info, it encrypts your browsing data, and keeps pesky hackers or even shady companies from peeking at your data. And here's the best part. You only need one account and it covers all of your devices. Phone, laptop, smart fridge, I don't know, whatever you've got connected, it can cover. Plus, I had to connect my smart fridge. <laughs> Plus, it's got 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, so you can browse if you're anywhere in the world. Need to access content that blocked in your region? Surfshark have got your back. And if you're worried about trying something new, they've got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you've got plenty of time to take it for a spin risk-free. So don't wait until your data's out there on the dark web. Go ahead, click the link below, or just go to surfshark.com forward slash mega for four extra months of Surfshark and secure your privacy with Surfshark today. Thank you to them for sponsoring, and now back to today's video. The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, often referred to simply as the Stealth Bomber or even just the B-2, is a truly awesome feat of aerospace engineering. The B-2 was displayed for the first time in 1988 at Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. The model was a co-production by several companies and contracted parties included Northrop Grumman Integrated Systems Sector, Boeing Military Airplanes Co., Hughes Radar Systems Group, General Electric Aircraft Engine Group, and Vought Aircraft Industries. The first B-2, known as the Spirit of Missouri, was delivered for use to the Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri in December 1993, and it saw action in warfare only shortly after. The model was used to pulverize Serbian targets in Kosovo during the Yugoslav Wars. The extraordinary capacities of the bomber were on full display, as it would fly to Kosovo non-stop all the way from its home base in Whiteman and back during its eight-week run. As a stealth aircraft, the B-2 is designed to avoid detection using a variety of technologies that reduce vulnerability to radar, and it is equipped with various infrared technologies which allow it to conduct its operations largely as if under an invisibility cloak. Stealth aircraft were made possible by technological advances in the 1970s. A key development was the rise of computers, which made the flight of such planes possible by controlling certain elements which could not be overseen by the pilot alone. Stealth planes are what are known as flying wing aircraft, which have no tail and no fuselage, which is the main body of the craft in which passengers would normally sit. They are an extremely aerodynamically efficient type of aircraft, being exceptionally thin, having very low drag, having a very light weight, and also a high fuel efficiency, which allows them to cover massive distances at very, very high speeds. And the B-2 model is truly one of a kind. Its parameters include four F-118 GE-100 engines manufactured by General Electric, which collectively allow the craft 36,000 kilograms of thrust, despite the B-2 having no afterburners, which minimizes further the possibility of detection. When it comes to weapons, it's absolutely stacked. It can drop conventional and thermonuclear weapons and is the only known in-service aircraft that can carry large air-to-surface standoff arms while still operating in a stealth capacity. The B-2 is also an easily recognizable piece of military hardware, somewhat resembling the famous Falcon bomber and coated in either black or 
or dark gray, it has a wingspan of around 52 meters and a length of around 21 meters, making it look like a sort of flying black Dorito. The model has the capacity to fly 6,000 nautical miles on one tank of fuel, or around 11,000 land kilometers. In other words, it can travel roughly the distance from London to Beijing without refueling, and probably all the way back again with a refuel, which in the case of the B2 could be carried out while airborne. Its weight comes in at around 72,000 kilograms, according to Northrop Grumman, making it about as heavy as one and a half M1 Abrams tanks. And as for speed, it can reach a maximum velocity of 1,010 kilometers per hour, coming close to the speed of sound, which is at 1,235. Although this does still make it significantly slower than some of the US's supercharged fighter jets. It also comes equipped with 24 port transducer units, or PTUs, which are sensors that allow each craft's computer system to calculate airspeed, angle of attack, altitude, and other metrics. The B-2 is, without doubt, the gem in the crown of stealth aviation. Only 21 have ever been produced, each one coming with a cost in the region of 1.5 billion US dollars if all extra parts are considered, equivalent to around 2 billion dollars in 2024. Shortly after its introduction in 1991, Northrop Grumman received the prestigious Collier Prize, an annual award recognizing the greatest achievement in aeronautics or astronautics in America, which is issued by the National Aeronautic Association, or NAA. And if you're interested to know the full specs of the model and its history, as well as the advanced weapon capacities it holds, then please do check out a video we made on that topic. It's linked below. It's also worthy of mention that no B-2 has ever been lost to enemy fire in combat. However, that doesn't mean the model is entirely infallible as, well, came to be proved in that day of February 2008. In the days before the accident, heavy rains had engulfed the Southern Pacific. Guam is periodically affected by high humidity, creating moisture. At the time of the accident, moisture had accumulated in the port transducer units of the Spirit of Kansas while docked on the runway of the Anderson Air Force Base, resulting in the unit's generally faulty environmental data. This would prove disastrous, as it would effectively trick the plane into attempting liftoff using false readings regarding speed and altitude. That morning, February the 23rd, 2008, the Spirit of Kansas began its taxi at the Anderson runway at approximately 10.30 a.m. local time. It was one of four B-2s stationed at Anderson, all of them there to act as a deterrent to China and North Korea, which, despite the great distance between both countries and the Air Force Base in the Pacific, could easily be reached due to the aircraft's advanced flight capabilities. The B-2s had been on Guam for four months by the end of February and were about to conduct their final flight, which would take them back to Missouri. But as mentioned before, and unbeknownst to either pilot, the combination of rain and high humidity had caused the plane's air data system to malfunction. The B-2 already showed an inaccurate altitude reading while on the grounds, but neither of the two pilots noticed the relatively minor error. The same error with the air data system meant that the plane's PTU sensors would report an inaccurate airspeed. As the plane began its taxi, it reported the traveling runway speed to be 262 kilometers per hour, which would be a safe takeoff speed, instead of the 243 kilometers per hour they were doing which wasn't. Due to the inaccurate readings, once the wheels of the craft had left the ground, the B-2's computer system registered a rapid loss of altitude. It automatically initiated a nose-up climb, which increased the angle of the craft's upward mobility, but which was impossible to affect because of the plane's low speed, heavy weight, and lack of momentum. All this baffled the pilots, who struggled to address the issues preventing the plane from taking flight. And so, while still in the process of simply taking off from the tarmac, the craft began to redescend back to Earth. As the pilots struggled to lift it, the B-2's left wing struck the runway, a crash was inevitable, and the pilots were forced to eject. Despite the matter taking place only in a matter of several seconds, both managed to eject successfully, although one suffered a slight spinal injury in the process. The billion-dollar craft came crashing down to the ground, where it burst into flames. The pilots were taken to hospital, with one discharged the same day, and the other, who'd suffered spinal compressions, being kept for several days before also being discharged. And that was it. Waterlogged sensors were enough to completely upend the flight of the B-2 and reduce it to a smoldering heap on the ground. The fire on the Anderson runway lasted for six hours before eventually being put out. Recovered pieces of the B-2 were later sent back to the US for analysis, but the craft was a wreck and utterly beyond salvage. The cost of the wreckage in 2024 would amount to roughly two billion US dollars. An investigation, as in the case of all aerial accidents, was quickly established. It concluded that the accident was the result of humidity and faulty PTUs, and both pilots were cleared of any blame. The investigation did note the danger of humidity caused by conditions in Guam had been raised during an inspection by Air Force engineers in 2006, but the recommendation to install heaters to dry out the PTUs after bad weather had not been acted upon. 
As a result of the accident, the recommendation was quickly followed and incorporated as standard procedure. In spite of the incident, the B-2 remains in use, and its use has continued to be successful. As mentioned, the B-2 has not been successfully attacked by an enemy air force, despite fairly regular use in warfare since the 1990s. But again, like with any piece of man-made hardware, the model is not immune to malfunction and accidents. In 2010, an unnamed B-2 ran into trouble, also at Anderson Air Base in Guam, and was forced to make an emergency landing, having lost one of its four engines mid-flight. The aircraft was later returned to service, but only after repairs which lasted two years. In 2021, another B-2 was grounded after capturing fire during a training sortie at Whiteman. Although details of the event were kept under wraps, evidently the damage occasioned was not very severe as it was again announced the aircraft would be repaired and returned to action. But yet another accident occurred in the following year, 2022, when another B-2 again caught fire in the same location. On this occasion, the damaged B-2 was not returned to service, reducing the total fleet of B-2s from 21 to 18 when we count the damaged and not yet returned aircraft from the 2021 incident, as well as the completely destroyed Spirit of Kansas. Possibly, given that the 2022 crash didn't result in the complete destruction of the craft, it is not held as a wreckage in the way that the Spirit of Kansas is. Or maybe it is simply that the military has not released the true extent of the incident in order to not endure the relative embarrassment of another written-off B-2. If that event was counted, however, that would take the total cost occasioned by the two accidents to an eye-watering four billion dollars. In 2024, Northrop Grumman was awarded seven billion dollars in contract for maintenance and enhancement of the fleet. The work will include software maintenance and expanded support equipment and is expected to last through to 2029, meaning that in spite of the recent problems, the continued use of the fleet is foreseen for continued use in the future. With that said, it may be that the shelf life of the stealth bomber is reaching its end anyway. The United States Air Force recently announced that it plans to reduce its inventory of aircraft significantly in the coming years. In 2025, it plans to reduce its fleet by 250, bringing the total number of aircraft to an unprecedented low of below 5,000. The stripping down will continue in the years thereafter, with the Air Force expected to shed a further 687 planes by fiscal year 2029, generating over $18 billion in savings. With that said, this is not intended as a measure to downsize the aerial capacities of the US military, but instead to boost procurement and the development of new technologies and aircraft for use in the coming years. In fact, the Air Force intends to expand its budget in 2025 to around $217.5 billion, a 1.1% increase on the budget of $215 billion in 2024. According to the Security Affairs website Defense One, the Air Force will focus on new areas of development such as the Sentinel Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, the rollout of Next Generation Air Dominance or NGAD, including a new type of fighter jet to replace the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, as well as a program to build robots capable of flying in tandem with manned fighters, and the development of a new type of stealth bomber, the B-21. And who knows, in spite of the updating of the B-2s planned ahead of 2029, it may be that the billion dollar aircraft will fall out of favor in the years to come, and perhaps even become obsolete in the years after. With military aviation forming such a crucial part of modern day warfare, it is and shall remain one of the most rapidly evolving areas of human technological innovation in the world.